Well, today we have to work on our golf cart here. This is a 96 uh, GN6, I believe, golf cart. And basically the kids ran it into the ground. They had a great time with it. Let's see. Uh, oh, what am I looking for over here? There was a number somewhere. Oh, it's a 2001 JN6. That's what it is. Well, needless to say, this thing runs pretty well, except it smokes real bad. And now it leaves like this lingering smoke that's just horrific. So what we're going to do is while winter's here, we're going to pull this engine out and rebuild this and gear up for next year. So oh, let's fire this thing up and move it a little bit here. Hopefully, kind of sad to pull apart a good machine. See, like I said, it works really well. So, oh God, it smells like death. <laughs> oh, it's that good, you could taste it. So, yeah, it's time. It's time to get to work. Ah, you can see the smoke just lingering right off it. And that ran for two seconds. Actually, that's probably just steam coming off of the engine. <laughs> Ah, so what do we need to do here? Well, I know we have to take our drive belt off. I know we have to take this off. I know, which is probably half our problem of why their piston is shot. So we're going to put a new piston and we're going to check our valves and go through the rest of the motor as well. Oh, let's get in there. Get to it. Okay, well, I think we have everything ready to go. All disconnected, electrical lines, fuel line. There are three bolts, one down here. One over here, and one in the front of this engine for engine mounts. Took this off just so it's out of the way. Got the muffler out of the way. An air cleaner. I think it's ready to come out of here. I'm not entirely sure or if it's going to move or not. Looks like it's still hung up. Nope, I missed one. There's another one there. Let's get that one. Always another bolt. Well, let's try this one more time now that I have that bolt out of the way. Ugh, I'm sure there's still probably something hooked to this thing. It seems like everything's out of here, though. We'll see. I get a spot to pick it up. Nope, still stuck on something. Oh, now what? Is there still another bolt hidden in here? Yeah, probably. Oh, I'm looking at it right there, I bet. How am I going to get that out of there? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, on to the next bolt. Okay, well, I ran out of daylight last night as I was taking this thing apart. So one little tip. While you're taking this air cleaner out, it has one of these little bungs on the bottom that slide onto here. So it's kind of confusing figuring out how to get this off and finally it slid and popped out of there. You also have to take this little tensioner off here. Well, keeps the motor from moving too much. And there's a bolt hidden down in here. So there's one here, one in the front, another over there, and two in the back, I think. Could be looking at two more right there. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, fuel line here. Wait a minute. That was the vacuum line for that. Okay. So we got to take our fuel line off yet. There's that. And, oh, I don't know. It seems looser here. What do we... Okay, I think everything's off. It might just be heavy. I have one wire, two plugs here. That has to get undone. Okay, I think if I undo that, I can probably pull this out. So I think this is the way I have to take it out. Kind of tipping it up out this way. It'll pull this to clear this out of here. Should come right up out of here now. Well, there it is. In all its glory. It's a little heavier than you might think, but it's out. It'd probably be easier if the starter was off of here. That would take a bunch of weight out. Wow. She's definitely pretty oomphy. 
So we're gonna clean this up. We'll drain the oil out of it and start pulling it apart. I wanna get the head off of this so I could figure out exactly what size this piston is. I'm assuming it's a standard one, but you never know. We'll measure everything and make sure. And now in here, we have this mess. So we'll clean all this goop out of here and get it all ready. All right, not too shabby. Oh, it'd be nice being all redone. So stay tuned and let's keep moving. Actually, it looks like the one bolt in the front is not one that we had to take off. This guy here, maybe we'll throw that one back on there. So I guess you just have the four there, there, and there. Okay. Well, the project has moved inside. So it's about three degrees outside and I figured I'd rebuild this here. Now this is going to be the last project in this garage, it's kind of sad. You can see this garage is running out of space. We have kind of a little bit of everything stored in here. And we're about to move, so I need to get this engine done because we need this golf cart back. Badly. And the poor girl's killed it, so let me get to it. So what I'm going to do here, first I'm going to start taking off this carburetor. Take off the plastics, valve covers. Uh, probably get the starter out of my way and slowly whittle away, take the plastics off, get it down to the head. I want to take the valves off and take the head off and see what this looks like. I need to get a measurement of the cylinder so I know what piston and rings to order. I'm assuming it's a standard one, probably never rebuilt, but you never know and I don't want to order it until I get it torn down. Shouldn't take too long to do, so let me get at it here. So this engine was giving us a little trouble as far as trying to tune it. Whenever we would have the air cleaner on it, it wouldn't run properly. So if you had a tiny space, it would work great. So something was up with the carburetor and that's where it drew gunk into it and burned up this engine. Now, what I noticed when I took this apart is that this piece was broken off the carburetor. So this wasn't sealing correctly to start with. So it's obviously running slightly lean with that. So we're gonna need to replace this piece, but I wonder if that's kind of part of the start of the problem. Well, when I took off this cover here, had all this wonderfulness, and I'm sure, you know, that was really blocking a lot of cooling in there, and you can see there's a lot of crud. And, you know, I'd continuously clean this part out, because it's drawing air in and blowing it out through here, but if it's got this much in there, that's definitely really going to affect the cooling of this entire engine, and that's probably part of the problem as well. So let's keep digging. We're almost ready to pull the head off of this. And we'll pull all that out of there. I got the generator starter out of the way. Pretty simple teardown. Okay, well, we are ready to pull this head and see what we are looking at here. Might need a little persuasion. I think we got everything out of it. Looks like all of them. Hmm. Here's the tool. Dead blow hammer. This thing's great. You need the right tool for the right job. You don't want to break anything. You need to hit it hard, but not hit it hard. There you go. It's working. All these are out. What's that hanging up on here? in there just so I would know which one's which. The middle guy is the long one, both of these. There we go. 
Took a little persuasion, but we got her. So, when we take a look for the first time, looks pretty good. Maybe a little burn. We'll put some gas in there and see if it drains out. Fill this up with gas and see if it comes pouring out of there with the valves closed. That'll tell you where you stand with your valves. Okay. It's really not the worst that I've seen. And now for this. Head gasket. Looks good. Now let's turn this engine over a little bit here. See what we're looking at in there. Wow. I see almost nowhere. Very, very little. I don't know if you can see in here yet, but these are some really clean walls. That's good to know. I might be able to get away with just slapping a piston in that, hone it and go. Okay, well now what we're gonna do, we'll run our dial calipers across this, find out what size this is. Zero these out. Pretty darn close to zero there. So we'll go across the cylinder here, all the way directly across. Now be careful not to scratch this when you're doing it. You want the widest measurement you can get. So based on that, it looks like 2.870. I'd say 2.870 would be the... I'm not sure if you can read any of that, but 2.8, then you come to 7.0. So I'll cross-reference that and find out that's probably a standard size piston. If that's what it is. Okay, order the piston and rings. I'll check the valves to make sure they're good to go. If they're not leaking, then I just need a head gasket, valve cover gasket, exhaust gasket, intake gasket, carb kit. Slap this puppy together and go. You know, I'm not going to get ridiculous with it. This is a golf cart engine. We just want it to not smoke so darn much. So let's take a look. Now, I do have a 36 etched in here. So that's leading me to think somebody may have taken this apart previously. If that's the case, maybe it's been machined and we'll need a different piston. So let me run some numbers and see what I see here. Well, we're at that point. We can start rebuilding this. So... Before I do my final cleanup, everything is pretty much ready to go. This cylinder, if you can see, I don't know if you can, what you can see here, but that is a polished, clean cylinder. Everything's good in there. Uh, just needs to be cross-hatched. So what we're going to do is I want to cross-hatch that now and get this ready, and then I can clean all the filings out of it one more time. Or not one more time, but when I do a final clean. So basically you want to stick that in there on the drill and you're going to want to go back and forth in and out and at a pretty quick smooth motion. You don't want to scratch anything but you want to leave a nice cross hatch pattern to it. So nice smooth and something just like that. And it's just ever so slightly starting to do that. I want to do it with two hands so I can concentrate on what I'm doing here. But I wanted to show you about what you have to do. That's pretty much the idea. The next thing we're going to do as well, oh, we're going to take a piece of scotch bright and we're going to clean all what's left of this gasket up here. Get rid of all that. So that'll be the next thing too, to get this whole head cleaned off and cylinder clean and then we'll do the head as well then I can take it outside and clean everything because there's still a little bit of 
gunk and crud and I want to get it all out of here before I start rebuilding this. And it will have a nice clean case. So make sure you do this beforehand so you get all the metal filings with little tiny bits of it out of there uh, while you can. And you need to do this. This part here with the cross hatching, it's so easy to go, well, well, I don't want to risk screwing up my cylinder. Well, here's the thing. With new rings, uh, let's look at my hand as a kind of an example. It's not perfectly round and neither is the cylinder. And right here in this spot, if you put something round in there, oil or gas would leak around the side of that. So by honing it, it's going to make it smoother all the way around and then it can dig into the rings and the rings can seat themselves properly against that and cut their own groove and they will polish off the cross hatch that you put in there but they'll do it the way they want it done instead of what you think it's going to be done and then the rings won't seat right and they'll usually smoke if you put new rings in without honing them so simple enough to do and make sure you do that okay you can see what a difference that cylinder head makes with a little scotch bright so that's completely clean and smooth nice i don't know let's see if you can see in the cylinder here maybe i can get an angle for you there you go you can probably see the cross hatching in there and that is just perfect a little bit let's see maybe something like that you can just see how it kind of scores it ever so slightly perfect and then like i said the rings will polish that again and it will cut the ring and seat that perfectly smooth to that and be just what we need. So now let's take it outside. We'll get this all cleaned up. And being clean is the name of the game when you're doing an engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all these pieces and clean the spot here. And then when I start putting it all back together, everything is clean. So do that yourself. Now that we have everything nice and clean, as you can see, the top of this cylinder is polished and nice and... Oh, there's a little residual oil in there. I'll get that out. What we're going to do next is start putting this thing back together. So I need to take the seal out. Okay, so what I ended up doing is this was in here uh, like this. And I was able to get the claw of the hammer in behind there and yank like that and got her out. So this side is out. Awesome. That's one thing we can be done with that just run the rag around there make sure it stays nice and clean bearings in great shape so now all we have to do is put this back in now a lot of times if this is really tight hit it around and see if it goes in nice and smoothly a little bit on each side or you take a socket put it over it that size and drive the socket it's a little easier usually to match this up before you put it on there you just go over your tools so, for example, it seems to fit one five sixteenths pretty nice, so that might drive right on there really well. Now, there's still a little residual junk on there. Let's see if we can't get that. Remember which direction it goes back in? simple a lot of times if you use a socket that prevents you from messing it up it spreads the force nicely over it all and you want to go until it's flush it's pretty flush there a little more on this side all right there we go so that's it now, we have to do that on the other side of this case as well, and maybe we'll get to that while we're at it. We'll rip this one out, pop that in, and then those are done. So, let me get that done. Same thing, just work doing this side. You can see how well that grabbed it. And I kind of didn't really pry on the case, but pulled upward more so I didn't risk damaging the casing. That's going to be the hardest part right there, is making sure you don't ruin any of that. And again, make sure you know which direction it goes back in. Drive a new one in. Now that we're basically moving along with this, we're going to check out our piston rings here. And then these are standard size rings. They make all different sizes. You'll figure out what you need. So, what do we have here? We have two big rings, 
two skinny little rings that are very tight together, and then this weird funky thing. So this weird funky thing and the two other ones are your oil ring. They go together kind of like an Oreo cookie. There we go, if I could separate this. There we go, I gotta put it together, something like that. That's your bottom ring. You wanna make sure that these little spaces don't line up with each other. If they all line up with each other, oil will go through. So stagger them about every third or so as you go around the piston. These guys here, take note if there's any difference in thickness or if there's an angle or any cut or notch on the top. I don't see anything. Everything looks good. So, with those, the old piston. I already took these off and I have a broken ring to deal with. Well, I it broke it pulling it off, so that's fine. But what you can do is use this ring and go through the grooves and clean off any carbon that might be stuck in your grooves. I mean, it fits perfectly. So that's a good thing to do with your old ring. Once you get your piston all cleaned up, go ahead and start putting the thing together. Now, you're gonna wanna start with this funky, where's that part that opens right there? Right in, piece of cake. Now my space, pay attention to where that space was. I don't know where I had it. Right here, okay, the space is here. Let's put this cut over here then. Now we wanna to try to get this right in the bottom. That's gonna be where you want to set it, because the top one's going to take the top hole. There we go. And it's going to be very hard to get over that if you don't get it in the right groove. And again, watch that edge so you don't scratch the skirt or uh, the piston. Perfect. On the side of the piston is the skirt. There, that oil ring is in and perfect. Now, let's do one more, and we'll flip this over to this side so we know the groove is completely on the other side of it. Minimize oil leakage or bypass. Get it set in there. Work it around. Oh no, no, not into that. That can be tricky because now I gotta try to get that out and not scratch it. That's pretty easy. These rings are pretty flexible being that size. So there you go, our first one is in on the oil ring. Ha. Huh. Now the fun one. These are a little thicker. These aren't as easy usually. Try to put it... There we go. I don't know. Sometimes you can use your thumbs. That's what I was able to do. So I have... Space here, maybe I'll spin that all the way over to the other side and I'll put another space. Oh, before I do that, I want to check this. What I need to do is put this inside the cylinder. And I just want to see what my spacing is here. I mean, you want to be, you know, have, I don't know what you can see there. But you need to adjust your distance there or make sure it's good because if it's too tight, the ring won't seat right. And it should be good, but you never know. And it's not the easiest thing to get in there. Okay. Now, let's see, let me see if I can show you what we're looking at. If you look. You see this little itty bitty crack. That is perfect gap going all the way around. It's got just a tiny bit of room for expansion to that. Yeah, you can probably see it better now. And that's exactly what we want. Perfect. I'd give you numbers, but this engine is you know, unique to itself. So look them up if you need to know what things are. Okay, so that's there. Let's get this other top ring on here. Bingo, all right, we're on. Now, we can move on. 
the arrow faces down into here. So when we put this back together, that's how that's going to go. In the meantime, we're ready for the crankshaft. So what we're going to do, uh, before I even do that, I like to have some oil on hand. You don't need much. I just put a little bit in a cap. And I'll take an oil, the bearing, inside the run of the race. Where the crank's going to sit. Oh, wow, that crank's heavier than I thought. It was a stretch. I didn't expect it to weigh that much. Give it a quick rub down. And everything as clean as you can be here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and put some oil on these races as well. Just run your finger on there, oil it up a little bit. This way it's got something lube in it and it's not metal on metal. And while we're at it, we can take and put some on the rod journal for now there we go and then we can stick this back in there first piece going in if we're lucky there it is it's in okay now let's wipe my finger on that perfect so now one piece in now piston Again, the arrow goes down, and while I have this out, let me, uh, I'm going to wipe this journal quick. I'm going to re-oil it. It's fresh and clean. Arrow down. I'm also going to uh, put a touch of oil in this cylinder. It doesn't need much, just a little coating. And when you get done honing it, after you clean it, you should spray just a shot of WD-40 or something down it. And that helps prevent any rusting or whatever. I'll get a little further down in here with some of this. There we go. Good. Now, it also doesn't hurt to add a little bit of oil on everything. Help everything, because it might be a while till I get around to starting this, and it, the more everything has a, some lube, the better. Put the crank part up, slightly down. This is going to want to slide. Try not to scrape your cylinder as you go down with the rod banging around. If you tip it straight, it may go down better. Okay. Now. Now the fun begins. Trying to compress all these rings and get that in there. Sometimes you can use a screwdriver. Then I got that set just right there. So this will drop through. Okay, so in my toolbox, I managed to find two different ring compressors. I have this one here, which is for Volkswagen rings, so this is too big, but in, as an example, just like that with a pair of pliers and it goes right around the piston and done. Piece of cake. So the other one I have is this crank down type, which will be perfect for this. It goes over top of everything. Now I have to lift this out a little bit to get to the oil ring as well. So we'll start this over again. Drop this over the whole thing. Now what we do is we tighten up here, and it'll clamp all that down. Probably not going to be able to do that like that. There we go. Okay, now that just clamped down around the piston and grabbed all the rings. Now what I need to do is push on this piston with something. Sometimes you can push on it with your hands. Usually you need to use like the bottom of a handle, use a rubber one would be a lot better. Or a piece of wood would even be better than that. Ah, the feeling that makes when it actually clips right in there. <coughs> awesome. So this is in. I can push it through. Cool. Now, ah, oh, oh, I move this. Let's see here. Now we can get in here and we can put on our cap. And there's also the splasher here that had to go on there. Don't forget about uh, forget about that little thing. Oh boy, that could be tricky. 
Okay, the cap goes a specific way. Make sure you remember which way your cap goes back on there. So it matches up the bearing. But now, which way did this thing go on? I think it went on... Well, it's only going to clear the case going a certain way, so that'll determine it. Okay. Well, in case you're wondering, it goes on like that. That's the only way it's going to clear the case. If you put it the other way, it's going to hit the side of the case anyway. So you have no choice but to put it that way. Make sure you put that in because what that does is it splashes the oil around and makes it slop inside the motor. That's super important. Okay. With that, you're going to put a touch of a little... I like to put a drop of thread lock on all my stuff. Just that little piece of insurance there. There's actually enough in that I could probably do both of those. So we're going to put these on. Now we need to get the torque wrench out. We need to crank these down and torque them down. Make sure you check out what your specs are. Dancy torque wrench out there. And just keep working it back and forth. You don't want to do all of one side at once. A little here, a little there until you get to that point. snug fit I like it okay next what we need to do let's go to top dead center here with the piston and now we have to set the timing and all the fun stuff here for this and this is where it gets tricky let me make sure you can see what exactly we're doing okay <sighs> what do we have here there is a dot. That's better now. A dot right here. Let's see. You can get a good spot of that. That dot is going to line up on your camshaft with this big giant hole here. Now, before you do this, make sure that your lifters are good, they're moving, and clean. Okay, next thing you want to do is add some oil. To the bottom here, crankshaft or camshaft. You can also put a little bit on these lobes just so that rubs a little bit smoother because it'll be a while till you get some oil splashed up in there once you start this up in anyway. So at least that's all nicely oiled. Maybe even put a little bit on top of these lobes for your lifters. Now you want to line that up with that dot at top dead center. So this one's pretty simple. And they're helicut cut so they slide right into each other. So that's lined up. Now the tricky one. Balance shaft here. Counter shaft. <laughs> so again, we're going to oil this up good. And now with this thing, there's a dot here. And you want to line that up with the tooth that lines up with it, basically. And it's only really going to go in one direction when you figure this out. And it's just going to clear everything. So let's see, as we get that in there. Okay, let me show you exactly what we're looking at here now. 
a little bit tricky to see. So, this one's lined up, those two. And at the same time those are there, this hole is going to line up on the tooth here. So that tells you that that's good. So now all that should be good. And then once you're in place, go ahead and rotate it a bunch of times and you'll see how everything should clear. So let me set you up here. That really likes to move with this. Pull this down. And let's turn this and see how this goes. There you go, turning good, turning smooth. I like it. So that's pretty much that for the bottom end. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take and put our gasket on here. It's this fancy thing. And uh, put the cover on. And I believe that's gonna take care of everything we have to do down in the bottom end for right now. So that's a big relief. And, oh, something's getting done. Put that on and go. That's, well, a gasket's a gasket. Anybody can do that. So, amidst doing that, I'll get that together. Then we get to move on to the head. So, hmm. Always something. On to the next thing. Let me get this gasket going here. This is pretty simple. Clean it up good with scotch Bright before you put it together. And then uh, oil your spots again before you put this in. This way everything's nicely oiled. Okay, when you put the cover on, put a little Loctite on it. And then just uh, kind of suck them down quick. Not really all the way down. Just a pattern here. Make sure everything's good. Put a couple down and tight. Turn the motor. Turns perfectly. Good. You want to torque all these when you're finally done. But man, what a, what a time saver these things are. Awesome. Bottom end is done for the most part. All right. Well, now that we're done with the bottom end for the most part, let's start working on the head. Now, I have a feeling the whole culprit of this smoking so bad in the first place is this magical little seal right here. And this is the intake valve guide seal, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this whole head apart, clean it, deal with it. Okay. Two big ones are on the outside. That makes that easy enough to remember. That gets rid of that. Rocker shaft pulls apart rather easily as well. Make sure you don't confuse what is what. Spin that rod around. Only goes just like that. Well, it could go the other way, but then you're wearing the bearings differently. So that'll stay like that for now. Okay. Now, the valve. Sometimes... That guy in the middle. Sometimes you can push these yourself. If we put something under this about that size, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Usually you want to use a piece of wood or, yeah, these are pretty soft valves there. I'm able to compress that with my finger. So if I could do that and push that clip, I'll be fine, but I gotta put something underneath that to do it. What do I have here? This'll work, a socket, okay? One simple little socket, it's that thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this underneath the valve, so when I put this on the floor, I can push against that, and actually it's gonna hit against these, and I don't think I'm gonna get that out of the way. All right, so now I need something bigger than that because I have to clear that. That'll probably work. As long as I push centered on that, for the most part, it'll be good. Do it over top of this. And I can push down on that. Yep, push that clip out of the way. Um, what can I push easier with? Just trying to use something to hold that down other than my fingers. There we go. Get that clip out of the way. 
and that's done. Make sure you see how that clip goes back on. Cap, spring, just like that. So now we're able to take our valve out of there. And I think what happened is running this thing around, it was low on oil. The kids got it super hot and I bet you they just smoked that seal. And it was allowing oil to run down inside this valve. And that's basically what the issue was. Whew, that sucker's on there. Let's see if we can't get that off somehow. Okay. We're not worried about this, but we don't want to damage anything else. Well, that was pretty easy, I gotta say, to get to. Clean all that out of there. So now all we have to do is drop our new seal right in there, and we'll be set. Make sure we got all that out of the inside. done and this is probably all the real problem was it's good in there otherwise so I'll put this back together actually want to oil this ever so slightly just so it has something on that seal there we go perfect now we can just take the uh, disc look at all that Good, that's some good carbon right there. That's thick stuff. Wire wheel and clean all that out. But anyway, now with that there, where did that little thing go I was using before? What the heck did I do with it? Okay. I'll put all this back together, same way. Now all you have to do is put that on there and push that clip in when I get it down to the right spot. Piece of cake. You don't need to... Luckily with this small engine, you don't need a fancy spring retainer tool if you put something under there to keep the valve from dropping. Because if the valve dropped out of there, I wouldn't be able to push against it. And you want to make sure you're you know, not pushing hard on it by any means. So. That solved that, this is fixed, that's done. Now all I have to do is scrape this gasket away off the top of here. So I'll scrape that off. And then I wanna hit this with the Scotch-Brite, get that nice and clean, and I'll polish the inside. I'm about ready to put the head on. Okay, well, now that we have our head all nice and polished and clean, ready to go, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna open up our fancy new head gasket. I suppose. Make sure you get a quality one of these. I mean, they have all kinds of stuff. It's kind of disappointing to go through all this and have a problem with the head gasket, so stick with Yamaha stuff. Ooh. I like it. Okay. A little ridge goes up on there. do is we're going to put that on here because it's going to probably be a little difficult. Eh, it might stay. Oh, see, that's what I was thinking it was going to do. Let's so make sure you get that the right way. Perfect. Ta-da! All right, that's what we want to see. Now we can start bolting this down. So... Got to look up my number here of what I have to torque these to. Okay, these big ones went on the inside. I got to put. Ah! They got moved here. Okay, so we found a thread locker. Put some thread locker on the head bolts, and now we have to tighten all these down. 
and check your engine specs this J38 is 20 foot-pounds on the head so we'll go around on a pattern here and get them all going Still hasn't torqued yet. That one torqued, okay. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And now this one should be perfect. Okay, so we should be good. Let's do one little check around. Head is the most important thing. You gotta get this right, or else you'll warp it. Done. Okay, heads on. Now next, fancy dancy push rods. So, drop these down. The heck am I looking at here? I was gonna say, don't tell me I forgot to put them in there. Yeah, they go in here. Okay. Now we have our rocker. As you remember, when we put this back together, so we couldn't confuse which direction this actually goes, it has to go that way. Let's get some decent wear on those. I'm actually going to hit that quick with the Scotch Brite, just because I want that to be really as smooth as possible. These valves, we set these super tight at four thousandths, so. You want to make sure that this is smooth and rolls and doesn't have anything really hanging up on it. That feels better. Still almost a little groove worn to those suckers. There's some wear on there. Yeah, that'll work. So now that we have that, okay, nope, missed it. Ah, holding too much tension on there. Okay, hold down on the push rod and then push it through. It's a little on the tight side. Like I said, these are set to 4,000, so give it a tight tap. No way, she's, she's pretty snug on there. It's turning on the push rod though, so that's good. There we go. I can hear. They sound just about right, but let's see. So we get our gauge. So 0.1 millimeter or four thousandths is really, that's just what that's at. Okay, this one's loose. I'll have to loosen this up and adjust this here. Uh, let me get my 12 millimeter, I believe. Okay. You wanna loosen the adjusting the locking nut put this in here and you want to make sure you're top dead center with your piston you're setting these on the compression stroke so you can still hear a little clacking in there let me make sure you can see any of this I don't know if you can see any of it but uh we're basically putting this feeler gauge in between the rocker arm and the valve and you can hear the So that needs to be tight. So we'll tighten up this part right here after we loosen this nut until it's just snug. Pretty simple to adjust valves and it's important you really do it on everything. You'll learn how to do it because you'll do it on everything. I guess if you got this far or you're still here and you're going to rebuild your engine, well that's great. There you go. See so you can adjust. Uh, that's a little too snug. Back it off ever so slightly and then when I tighten this nut 
And it's still a touch. That's it right there. I could feel the tension's just about right. Perfect. So if anything, you want to air them be on the side of loose as opposed to too tight. If you're too tight, you'll burn your valves. Like, yep, ah, that's a touch too tight when I torque that out down there. That could be the hardest part is keeping things from turning. That center wants to turn. Sometimes you have to put a little pair of pliers or something on that center part so it doesn't turn while you tighten it. Grab that. But then we're pretty much done. I think all we have to do at this point is put our valve cover on. Whoa. Put a valve cover gasket first. And then we have our engine is like a complete engine. We'll throw our clutch and our uh, flywheel on here. Woohoo! Get somewhere. Let me go get this adjusted. Okay. Gasket. Valve cover. Put a Loctite on each one of those. Get these on. We are in business. Flywheel bolts. This one here is 54 foot pounds. And same with the clutch on the other side. Sometimes it could be tricky to hold when you start to get enough tension on them. I need to pry, watch you don't break the cast for the flywheel. Now 54 isn't too much. Should be able to hold it. Maybe not. There it is. Okay. So that side's done. We are trucking along. Oh, wow. Look at that. Cool. Exciting stuff. Now we can get the pulley on here. We are almost done. Oh. Poor thing, it's probably seen some better days as well. And the other one had a key, a keyway, this one doesn't. Ta da! Ah, oh, you know what? Almost did it. Now, with everything, I got in the habit of thread locking everything. Just because vibration is brutal. You don't need much, just a little dot to help glue that on there. And always use the blue, don't use the red. Unless you really don't ever want something to come apart. But just a touch of that stuff really makes a difference. That's a different size. Ah, oh, this is exciting. What a relief to get this done. So much going on right now and I don't have time to be doing projects here. So I have to get moving. And we need the golf cart. And we need the garage space. Let's see if I wedge my foot here and here. Wow, it was easier before. Let's see. Nope. Nope. What do I have to wedge in there? How can I wedge that to go this way? Four isn't that much. There it is. Okay, we're good. Ta -da! One done engine. That's so cool. I just heard it. That's so great. 
So now I just have to put a carburetor on here, which this poor sucker, oh, she's getting fixed. She's getting redone. Go dunk her and clean her up. Maybe a Predator engine on there, one of those big 420s or something. That's possible. So, eh, on to this next. Okay, a few more minutes and I uh, had to throw the generator on and the belt, the plastics. It's ready to go. Let's go drop this thing in and uh, see what it'll do. Well, look at that sitting in there. Okay, it's bolted in. I have the belt on. I just have to tighten up the four engine bolts there. Hook up the exhaust and some wires. And I'm waiting on the carburetor mount. It's the one I had on there. It was cracked and broken. So as soon as that comes, I can fire it up and test it. So it's getting there. Coming to fix the last thing we have to do. We just have to hook the choke cable up. Right, buddy? Yeah. Cool. You know what you have to do here? Yeah. All right. Let's let's do this. That's it. Just have to hook this up, and we get to fire this thing up. So I'm excited about that. You too. You want to drive this? Yeah. All right. Well, here's our moment of truth. Turn the key on here. I primed some gas into this, blowing into the tank, so there should be gas in the carburetor. Hold the choke. She's in forward now. Um, make sure this goes in case this ignites. Let's see. Come on, girl. Oh, I heard a putter. I even knocked a meatball over. Buddy, I didn't know you were behind me. I'm sorry. Are you all excited the golf cart's gonna go in here? And here you get run over? Well, be knocked over by me. Let me guess. Hey, you wanna go for a ride? You wanna go drive it? Oh, I figured for sure that would make him happy. Well, let's go test it, kiddo. It's fired up. Let's let's go. Let's throw the seat on and see what this will do. Put that down there. And, uh, all right. Give me one sec. All right, well, now that we heard it sputter, we are uh, officially ready to go test and hit the choke. You gonna drive, little guy? You wanna steer? Now we're gonna go as slow as we can to break this in. Hey, look at that. It's sputtering to life. Hang on, hang on, bud. We're driving. It's running, it's running. Take it nice and easy, let it warm up. Go easy and slow. Hey, it sounds great. Other than a clanky clutch, but that's fine. Taking it nice and slow, as well as slow as I can kind of go with it. Right, bud? Look, we're driving the golf cart again. It's working. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. We don't really have a whole lot of money into fixing this thing up, but now there's no smoke behind me. It has done that yet. Cool. We'll do some heat cycling. We'll get it warm and then let it sit and cool back off. We want to break this piston in nice and easy. Don't want to scream it. Don't want to rev it. Right? Stuff works just effortlessly. Nice and quiet. You missed the golf cart, dude. You want to drive? Best thing about having a golf cart right here. You gotta pay attention where you're going, though. Let's go down the driveway. Fixed up, hardly any money into it. We did 
did the clutch before on this. Um, actually, that would have been the other golf cart we did the clutch. We fixed this thing multiple times, getting it running for various reasons. And now it is done. Officially done. Don't go anywhere. Let me get a shot of you driving that thing. Yeah? Is that cool? Is it finished? Yay, the golf cart's up and working. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, super cool. All right, bud, you gonna say bye to everybody? Wanna say bye? No? Oh.